This is Mark Tobias at the Lockfest and in the Czech Republic. And we're now talking about making keys with 3D printers, uh, the relatively new technology. I have Alexandra Trafalt from Paris, uh, who's spent the last couple years writing programs, uh, especially for the police and uh, the government units to produce keys. Uh, Alexandra, tell me what you've done and what your capabilities are. So the series of software uh, can duplicate basically any mechanical key. Uh, it can be patented, it can be regular, it can be dimple key, it can be pump key, uh, lever lock key, with, any kind. With movable it, elements also with movable for high element, security locks. Yes, with no problem, even with a spring uh, part, uh, with ball bearings, this is uh, completely no problem because you can manage everything in the software. Yeah, so you're, you wrote a piece of code what do you need to make a key? To make a key, basically, I need a picture of the lock, so I get the profile of the keyway. Yeah, of the keyway. Yeah. So you can make even a very complicated shape, and to get the code, uh, a picture of the key is enough. Or you can also find the master key code uh, from a lock that you take apart. So basically, you can, in five minutes, you can get the code of a key, and even if it's highly protected or supposedly protected, you can make a duplicate in 3D. So one of the tenets of high security locks, we have four in the standards, uh, with VDS in Europe and Underwriters Laboratory and BHMA in America. We have three legs of the stool. We have forced entry protection, we have covert entry protection, and we have key control. Yeah. Basically, 3D printing now, the sophistication with your software, we can forget about key control. Yes, and uh, about um, no, non-destructive entry too, because if you can duplicate the key, you can... Yeah, of course, you, a key is the easiest way to open the lock. Yeah, so basically you can, there is no value of this... Um, this Patented level. key control any longer in the hands of, the, with the right individual and right software. And we, we might add that your software is only available to law enforcement. Yeah, only because of course, not to locksmiths. This is, this is uh, it must be protected. But technically, a burglar can do it with some time and uh, enough knowledge. Uh, it is possible to do so. And a 15-year-old kid yeah. with a 3D printer. Exactly. However, we might point out that the 3D printers that are a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, they don't have the resolution except to print very low security keys. Yeah, it depends. Uh, I would say, for example, these two keys, uh, which are quite high security, they are pump locks, very complicated to pick. Uh, they are patented, for example, this one is patented. You can't duplicate it very easily uh, right. at the locksmith. Uh, but the key is working very well, and even if it's in plastic, uh, you can use a metal tensioner if you need yeah. to open it. So basically, and with a 2,000 euro, machine you can print high security keys and we can print keys now in ABS plastic ni nylon metal stainless steel exactly you can you can print uh, titanium if you like stainless steel titanium brass bronze you can even do silver if you like and chocolate cakes yeah the the pastry chefs now are using 3D printers for intricate. Yeah, I, w I would not print a key <laughs> in chocolate, but why not? No, why not? So all these keys that we're looking at here, you've made. Yes, exactly. Uh, all these keys are working in their uh, in their locks. For example, this one is a pin in pin key, and I can show you it works smoothly with no problem, like the original key. This one, for example, has a very special shape which is uh, protected, it's not patented, but it is brand protected. Right. And so technically, you can't duplicate it legally. Yeah, but with that's this, because it's patent protected. Yeah, it is protected. But with this, in one minute, you can make a duplicate, or you can make the file to make the duplicate. But the reality is patent protection now with regard to 3D printing is meaningless. Yes. It's illegal. Yeah, but, it, it is illegal, but... But that know, won't stop either government 
who doesn't worry about that, or the burglar. Yeah, a burglar, if he, if he is about to make a burglary, he, d yeah. he doesn't care to make an no. illegal key. No. So this is, this is fine, you know. And you can even make very, very complicated keyway. I don't know if you can see it yeah. on the video. And the, the precision of 3D printing is very good. And you can see, again, the key is working with no problem. Yeah, and that's made out of plastic. This is, this is plastic, you can do the same in metal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so what does your program do? Show us, show me Te your program. Technically, uh, so the program is divided in a few sub-programs. So one program for disk lock uh, keys, one program for dimple keys, one program for paracentric keys, uh, one for lever lock keys. So basically what you do, if you look on the right, this is um, a very basic key with quite a uh, complicated keyway and basically what you do is that you just give the key code here in matter of millimeters yep so let's say in the third position i need a 5.3 millimeter when i update if you look carefully here you can see the key shape change uh, accordingly so if I know the code of the key, which I can know easily from a picture of the key, I need less than 10 seconds to, to make a new key. Yeah. And you can do dimple lock, so with three rows of pins, for example, so high security locks. You can do very high security keys uh, with disk. And the same way you just change the combination and automatically the, the combination is changing on the 3D part. So if you take a pick, you walk up to a lock mm -hmm. on a heavily guarded door. Yes. You're a police unit, SWAT team, anti-terrorism unit, you need to get into the door. Yeah. But you don't want to break down the door. No. You want to go in covertly. Mm -hmm. You can walk up and take a picture of the keyway. Yes. And then as long as you know the kind of lock it is, which you usually do because it's printed on the front of the lock, you can input that into your software. Yes. And you can make a key. You can make a key if you know the key beatings. So you need some information. This will give you the blank. It will give you the blank. So yes. if you if you know the key where you can make a blank to make impressioning, yes. to make a master key if you are in a master key system. Uh, or if you have even a bad picture of the key, let's say the terrorist has his key laying around somewhere yeah. at a bar or something, and you take a picture even from 100 meters, you can get the code from 100 meters. Yes. And you will get the, the 3D. We've, we've demonstrated in the past how to capture pictures of keys yeah. hanging on your belt, for example. Make a picture, decode the key visually, yes. make a key. And the biggest problem is obtaining the blank, especially if they're restricted blanks, especially high security restricted blanks uh, for very high security facilities. So once you have a blank key, it's over. Yeah, it's over. And sometimes the problem also is how to cut the key. If you look at this key with the very special shape, you know, you remember this lock yeah. here. Even if you have a blank, how will you cut it? You need a special machine, special vice. Yeah. Uh, the big advantage is that you cut the key directly in software. Yeah. So when it goes out of the printer, it's a working key. And Alexander, how long does it take on average to print a key? To print a key, I would say 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And this is a relatively small printer, so yes. you can have it in a van. Yeah. or a vehicle yeah, so run on 12 volts, no problem? No problem. The printer is about the size of a computer. So, you know, it's, it's very small. You can carry it, really no problem. So, Alexander, basically, patents mean nothing for key control now. Yeah, patents based on the shape of the key means nothing. If yeah. you have a patent uh, based on something else, like magnet, uh, you, can, you can print magnet, you can put magnet in a key, but it's more complicated. It's much more complicated. Yeah, and if you have a patent on uh, electronic communication also, uh, it's good. But patent based only on the shape yeah. or on the way the key interacts with a moving element in the lock. 
it means nothing. Basically, a, 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 metal, a, piece of, a key is a piece of metal. Yes, basically. And or a piece of plastic, if you like. Or a piece of plastic. Yeah, but it's so the, pro the problem is you can't encrypt the key. No. There's nothing you can do. What you see is what you get. And the sophistication now of printers and your program is that whatever you see, you can replicate. Yeah, you can, you can do it. You know, uh, what I say to all my clients when I do consulting is hide your keys. Because yep. it's like a credit card, it's like a password. You don't want to lend it. You know, a lot of time you will lend your key to a friend or to a colleague, but you will never do that with a password. Uh, Sometimes when I make a comparison with the computer world, I say you will never write your password on a paper, give it to a colleague, and next day you say, hey, please give me your, my paper back. I don't want you to have my password anymore. Because this is silly. And it's the same with the key. If you give it to someone, even one minute, when you give it back, you don't know what you did. Maybe a mold, maybe a picture, yeah. maybe a duplicate. Well, 15 seconds and you have a picture. Yes. And if it's a good picture, which all the cell phones now are capable of, then you have all the depth and spacing data you need. Exactly. And you can decode it from the picture, put it into your program, and it'll produce a cut key. Exactly. So what we haven't talked about is bump keys. Yes. Because this came out in 2006 to America. Uh, we were pretty involved in that issue. Bump keys are still an issue, although many manufacturers have dealt with the security problems. So the same issue arises with bump keys. You have to have the right keyway yeah. to generate a bump key. And a bump key is essentially a key with all the cuts all the way yeah. deep. What, what we can do actually, uh, it's even easier, you know, with this program, uh, it's even easier to make a bump key than to make a key. Because let's take again this key. If I want to make a bump key, I will just set all depths as the maximum depths of the manufacturer. So let's say this is four millimeter in every position, like this. No, if I update it, what yep. I get... And there's a bump key. Is a bump key. So you can see, in 10 seconds maybe, we made a bump key. Yeah. So this is even worse as a security problem. This is even better for law enforcement agencies because they can, yeah, basically they can go where they need to go. Well, there's another issue. Uh, if you make a key out of plastic, there's no forensics. Unless there's residue yeah, it depends. from the from the plastic, yeah. you're not going to see any marks on the pins. With, with a bump key, you will see marks because you have to hammer it. But if you make a duplicate, you yeah. have no forensic mark. That's no. correct. We, we did some testing uh, with the French uh, gendarmerie uh, to see if you can detect a duplicate made in plastic. And yeah. You can't. Unless, unless the guy make a mistake using it, but if you use a perfect duplicate like you can get with this software, there is absolutely no forensic trace. Yeah, and bump keys are still, in many ways, the best ways to open pin tumbler locks. Yeah, especially with uh, very complicated keyways. You can't get an uh, electropic gun, you can't pick it easily, but the bump key will fit directly. Yeah. And have I missed anything? I think it's complete. <laughs> Thank you very much, Alexander. Thank you, Mark. Pleasure. Thank you.